إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الظنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we start with the most beautiful ayah, the ayah of mercy, the ayah of hope, the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about His servants, those who have transgressed against themselves. Those who have done mistakes say, O Prophet, that Allah says, O my servants who have exceeded, exceeded the limits against their own souls, transgressed the limits of Al Halal, ventured into Al Haram, and they know that they have made mistakes, do not lose hope in Allah's mercy. La taqmatu min rahmatillah. Never give up on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't lose hope for indeed Allah certainly forgives all sins. He is indeed the all-forgiving, the most merciful. My dear brothers and sisters, I have started some months ago in several masajid, a series where I want to connect to the seed of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I want to extract some lessons from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum for indeed for every problem that we experience in our lives. If we only were to read in the seer of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would find a multitude of solutions. Every problem. And so today... I come to you with the story of the Hijrah of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. The real reason and the real way how he did Hijrah radiallahu anhu. For there are some narrations that are weak. This one, however, you can find in almost every book of Seerah, in almost every book of Tafsir. It is the Sabab al-Nuzul, the reason, according to some, the reason of for, of revelation for the ayah I just recited to you before, the ayah of hope. Umar ibn al-Khattab, and you can find the story, the beginning of the story in Sahih al-Bukhari. Umar ibn al-Khattab agreed together with two other companions, Hisham, Al-Hisham ibn al-As and Ayash ibn Abi Rabi'ah, radiallahu anhum jami'an. He agreed we're going to do hijrah together from Mecca to al Madinah. And they agreed, tomorrow we're going to meet at that place in Mecca, the outskirts of Mecca. And so when the next day came, only Umar ibn al-Khattab and Iash ibn Abi Rabi'ah were there. Al-Hisham was already captured by the Quraysh. And they found out later that they tortured Al-Hisham to the point that he left Islam. He abandoned faith. So Umar ibn al-Khattab and Iash Ibn Abi Rabia, they make their way to Al Madina. I want you to imagine, this is not an easy journey like today. 
It is not sit in the train for an hour and a half and you reach Mecca, uh, Medina. It's not a coach ride that takes us a couple of hours. It is a screwed journey through that heat, the desert. Not some sand dune desert, which is already quite difficult. Volcano lava stones. 10 days, 12 days, sometimes 14 days, and they are walking for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leaving everything behind in Mecca. And so when they come close to Al Madinah, the narration goes that none other but Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl caught up with them. And he couldn't do anything with Omar because Omar was headstrong. But Ayash, Ayash was the half brother of Abu Jahl. So he tried to convince him to come back to Mecca. And he told him, your mother, your mother has taken an oath that she will not eat and she will not drink until you come back to her. Hunger strike. Obviously it was a lie. But Ayash didn't know. Ayash didn't know. And he was shaking. And he made the decision that I'm going back. I need to see my mom. Omar tries to convince him, don't go. This is a deception. Leave your mother. We all know about Birrul Walidain, but if your mother is hungry, she will eat. And if your mother is thirsty, she will drink. This is a matter of faith. This is a matter of life and death for you. Spiritual life and death. Don't go back. But he was convinced. And he made the decision that I'm going back. He said to Omar, I'm going back. I will look after my mother. And I will take some money that I have left behind. And I will come back to Al Madinah immediately. He said, don't go. He said, no, I'm going. And he said, if that is the case, take at least my camel. We are close to Al Madinah. Take my camel. It is a fast camel. If something happens, you escape and you come to Al Madinah. So Omar proceeds to Al Madinah. Whilst Ayaj goes back with Abu Jahl. And on the way, Abu Jahl played him, tricked him, deceived him, caught him, tied him, took him as a prisoner, and went back with him to Mecca. And once reaching, upon reaching Mecca, they tortured him to the point that he abandoned Islam. He abandoned Islam. Now when this story and when this khabar, the news reached Omar and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum in Al-Madinah, they thought that there is no hope for Al-Hisham and that there is no hope for Ayash ibn Abi Rabia. They knew they were Muslims and they abandoned Islam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. And Abdullah ibn Abbas comments as one of the sabab al-nuzul, one of the reasons he said, there were people who came with the clear intention to accept Islam. They came to the Prophet ﷺ, they wanted to accept Islam, and they said to the Prophet ﷺ, we have done shirk, and we have exceeded in shirk, and we have killed, and we have exceeded in killing, and we have done zina, and we have done exceeded in zina and we drank alcohol and we exceeded in intoxication is there any hope for us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers La rahmatillah. never give up on the hope from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never give up as long as there is ruh in your soul a ruh soul in your body there is always hope whatever you have done there is always a way back. The doors of Allah's rahmah are open and they are widely open for those who are sincere. Those who are sincere and want the rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's doors are open. I'm saying that's very conscious about the situation of many of us here in the masjid today. Some of the youngsters who are in the audience today who sometimes write and they say, I have done it all. There is no hope for me. I am destined for Jahannam, they say. And this is what shaitan wants you to believe. This is the message from shaitan. He wants you to believe that. He wants you to get those messages that we are getting indoctrinated by from a young age. 
that there is only this life and you are done. You are done for. There is nothing for you in the Akhirah. He wants you to believe that shaitan. Let it be. Let it go. Just do it. YOLO, they say. You only have one life. Can you live it to the fullest extent? Because for Akhirah, there is nothing for you. And our youngsters are falling for it. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Never give up on the hope and the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar ibn al-Khattab and the Sahaba listened to the ayah. And when they realized, and it said as a sabab of a nuzul, in the continuation of the story, he said, we realized that this ayah was revealed for the likes of Al-Hisham and Ayyash ibn Abi Rabia. So they started to write letters to them, calling them back to Islam, telling them, no, there is hope. Come back. And as Al-Hisham and Al-Rabi' and others receiving those letters, they converted back to Al-Islam. They come to al Madinah and they accept Islam. My dear brothers and sisters, the story from today, the real story here is, that we really need to go home. We re- this ayah is not an ayah to play. This is not like, yeah, just do it, then it's okay, Allah will forgive. That's not, the, that's not the reason for this ayah. Don't take it light. But this is an ayah for us. When we make mistakes, and we all make mistakes, Kullu bani Adam khatwa. Every child of Adam is a sinner, makes sins, does mistakes, and the best of all of them are those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who know that they have a, a Rabb and their Rabb forgives. He forgives as long as you really want it. And the Sadiq. And to that extent, we have a beautiful hadith that was narrated from our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you can find it in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. The highest level of authenticity. Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna abdan asaba zamban faqala rabbi aznabt faghfir li faqala rabbuh a'alima abdi anna lahu rabban yaghfiru zamba wa ya'khuzu bihi ghafartu li abdi. There is a servant, he said, who has done a sin, a mistake. And he said, I'm turning to my Rabb, to my Lord, to my Master. And I say, I have performed a sin. And I seek forgiveness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds, my Abd, my servant, he knows that he has a Rabb. He knows that he has a Rabb. A Rabb that both forgives, but also punishes. For those who don't seek forgiveness. So I have forgiven my servant. And the hadith goes on. The same servant stays for a while. Doesn't do no sins. And then he commits another sin. And so the same thing happens. He seeks forgiveness and Allah answers with the same response. My Abd knows that he has a Rabb. And that the Rabb forgives for those who want forgiveness. But also punishes for those who don't. So I have forgiven. And then he stays for a while without any mistakes. And then he performs a sin again. And he goes again and he seeks forgiveness from Allah. And he receives the same. This is the interaction. And so the hadith ends. Allah says. He can do whatever he wants. He can do whatever he wants, not for us to do whatever we want. But this is going to happen whenever you seek Allah's forgiveness. So we've got some youngsters, we've got some people, we've got myself, we all ask, what if I do the same sin again? And I make tawbah and I find myself tomorrow doing the same thing again. And again, and again, and again, and again. This hadith is for me and you. For us, not to play with the forgiveness of Allah, but to be sadiq, truthful, whenever we do tawbah. But if you're tricked again, and again, and again, 
into the mistake, the same on another. Reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will find the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as you're truthful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the reality of the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How huge it is. And are we not playing with the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But that we are reaching out to Allah whenever we make mistakes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us rahmah. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al azim. Wa nafa'ana wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikr al hakim. Akulu kawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa iril muslimin. Fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa ghafuru rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa. والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد قال الله تعالى استغفروا ربكم إنه كان غفارا Seek forgiveness from your Lord for he is truly most forgiving My dear brothers and sisters Doing istighfar, a simple word like astaghfirullah, said with a truthful intention, with a sincere heart, will do wonders, miracles. In fact, if you read in the Qutb al or Asir, the Qutb of Tazkiyah, you will find that this is almost a hidden secret or an open secret if you wish that has been practiced for 1400 years by Muslims since the inception since the time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum astaghfirullah a simple word it is noted that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said sometimes 70 sometimes 100 times astaghfirullah in one sitting he sallallahu alayhi wasallam whose sins were forgiven his past, present, and future. This simple word doesn't just have spiritual effects and benefits, but even material, physical, miracles. And, you can, and there are so many stories, so many, that, I, that is too much that I can't, this khutbah would... There is a man who came to Al Hassan ibn Ali radiallahu anhuma and he asked him in this narration that he has a lot of money but he can't bear children. There's no children. So he said, Give me an Osiha. Say something. Give me something. And he simply said, Say astaghfirullah and do it a lot. So this man started to practice this astaghfirullah. On some days he would reach 700 times astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. He would just go on and on and on. He was... Allah gave him 10 children, according to this man. 10 children. And when this reached the Khalifa at the time, he called the alim. Who gave you this? Where is your evidence? Why did you tell him to do astaghfirullah? Other people asked. So he said to him, didn't you hear? Don't you read the Quran? I'm paraphrasing this narration, but he told them, don't you see that Allah says, وَيَزِدُكُمْ قُوَّةً إِلَىٰ قُوَّتِكُمْ That if you practice, practice istighfar, Allah will give you energy on top of your energy. Don't you read the Quran? He told them, don't you read that Allah said for those who practice astaghfirullah wa yumdidukum bi amwalin wa banin that Allah will give you abundance of wealth and children. The problem is, my dear brothers and sisters, we read the Quran, but we don't understand it. And we don't want to practice it. And we don't want to implement it in our lives. The solutions for our problems, personal, local, political, international, Gaza, other things, they're all in the Quran. The solutions are there. They are there in the Sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah gave promises that He, 
Allah will take care of our situation if we do our bit of the bargain. You believe, you practice, you put your belief into action, Allah will take care of the situation. The promise is in Surah Al Nur. Go and read it. Al Sariya, the khutbah has to end. Al Sariya, very quickly, I give you 10 benefits of. Of Astaghfirullah for those who practice istighfar, istighfar. Number one, forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ayah I already recited at the beginning of the second khutbah. Number two, mercy from Allah. And there's a difference between the forgiveness from Allah that leads to the mercy of Allah. Mercy is the ultimate key to Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wastaghfirullah inna Allah ghafoorur rahim. Ghafoorur rahim. The mercy is there. Number three, avoidance of punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah will not punish them whilst they are doing istighfar. Number four, five and six, a way out of every problem. A relief from every anxiety. For those who are asking, what can I do? I'm feeling... Pressured. I have problems. I'm feeling anxious. A way, a relief from every anxiety. Number six, provision out of nowhere. Provision out of nowhere. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Man lazimal istighfara. Who is continuously, whoever is continuously saying and doing istighfar. Astaghfirullah. A simple word. جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ ضِيْكٍ ضِيْقٍ مَخْرَجًا وَمِنْ كُلِّ هَمٍ فَرَجًا وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will appoint for them a way out of every problem, every distress, a relief from every anxiety, and He will provide for them from, from, where, they, from where they cannot imagine it. Risk just coming to you. Why? Because you've been from those who practiced astaghfirullah. Sadifan. Not just on the tongue, but from your heart. Number seven. Strength from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I've already recited the ayah for, for you. Energy on top of your energy. Number eight. Tuba in paradise. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tuba liman wajda fi sahifatihi istighfaran kaseera. Glad tidings and tuba to those who have excessive seeking forgiveness istighfar in their records of deeds on the day of judgment and tuba according to some is a place in paradise according to others is a tree in paradise according to some others it's a special place for those who make istighfar number nine abundance of rain and ten abundance of rain wealth kids gardens of paradise and rivers i mean these are even more than ten why because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Nuh alayhi salam informed his people and Allah recite, makes it a part of the Qur'an. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدَرَارًا وَيُمْدِدُكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا Subhanallah al-Azim. Nuh said to his people, seek forgiveness from Allah. Say astaghfirullah, practice it day and night. And the result for that, Allah is the truly the most forgiving. He will shower you with abundance of rain and supply you with wealth and supply you with children. And he will give you gardens and he will give you rivers in, the, in, the, in Jannah. I mean, if this is not enough for us to realize this, I don't know what it takes, my dear brothers and sisters. Never give up on the hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek istighfar. Make istighfar every day. Whenever you have the chance, sit down and rather than scrolling aimlessly through Instagram and TikTok, aimlessly, just spend some of that time. Astaghfirullah. 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 Day and night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters in Gaza. And finally, my dear brothers and sisters, a little bit off topic. As an action point. For me first. And then for everyone else. Let's go home. 
and let's look into the mirror. Metaphorically, I don't need you to go to the bathroom and look in the mirror. Metaphorically, look into the mirror and try to find the deepest levels of your soul. Find it. Some say this is from Umar radiallahu anhu. Account for yourself before you're going to be accounted for on the day of judgment. Then sit down and say, Astaghfirullah sadiqan min qalbi. Truthfully, from your heart, say Astaghfirullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us mercy.